that I've got another man in my life all the time <laughs> and he has to measure up to him, <laughs> which Brennan does a lot very much, but anyway. But when you go and pray, you should be doing it in, some people call it a war room. There is a movie called The War Room and it's brilliant. It's a really good movie if you ever want to go and watch it and you can go in and turn a closet, a walk-in wardrobe into your war room, into your prayer room. Or if you're lucky enough to have a spare room in your home, you can make that your, your room. And they, they, some people actually take everything out of it and just have it as the walls and the door. And you go in and you shut it so there's no distractions and you can have time with the Lord. Food for thought, hey. I don't know where I'd put all my stuff in my house or in that room if I had to do that, but, you know. Let's make sure I'm staying up with it. No, I've obviously missed something. Okay, so this is Psalms. So we're going into the Psalms. And if you remember reading in Psalms about, well, in reading about David, he was the best example in the Bible of somebody who was lonely. Sorrows fill my heart as I feel helpless, mistreated. In all, I'm all alone and in misery. Come closer to me now, for I need your mercy. That's one from the Passion, and it's Psalms 25, 16. You can hear the desperation in his voice as he's pleading to God for mercy. Another one of, of David's in um, the Psalms 13, 1 through 2. I'm hurting, Lord. Will you forget me for, forever? How much longer, Lord, will you look the other way when I'm in need? How much longer must I cling to the thing's constant grief? I've endured this shaking of my soul, so how much longer will my enemy have the upper hand? So loneliness is from the enemy. He's trying to distract you. He's trying to upset your whole world, flip it on its side and take you away from God. And that's what happens when we use that barge pole. We push everyone away and we even do it to God at times. And that's when we start getting sick and we start getting distracted and upset and we don't spend that time with the Lord and going into our prayer rooms and choosing to be alone with the Lord because we get that distraction. And that's what David's saying here. He's being attacked. He's getting all these thoughts in his head. It's making him vulnerable. And it's not a nice place to be in. But God is always with us. Always. And then when we, another story in the Bible was when Hagar was worried about what sort of life her son would have without her father, his father, Abraham, in her son's life. So Genesis 21, 20 of the New King James. So God was, was with the lad, being the son, the baby, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. So he went from being a baby, vulnerable little baby, all the way to getting a career, and God was always there. So why isn't God there for you or me? He is, but we push him away. We use that barge pole. <laughs> and if you need more revelation that God is always with you, God is with you in all that you do. Genesis 21, 22. Now that's part B of that scripture I didn't put all of it because I only wanted that bit so but the principles of and the principles of governing warfare in De Deuteronomy 20, um, 20 verse 1 say when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you 
Do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So any battle that you are in, just say you're going for a job interview and you've got to, got to go to that, ask the Lord for his help, his grace and his mercy for you to blitz that, that um, job interview. Ask him for the job you want. <laughs> He's going to open the doors if you ask him. God is not going to intervene in our lives if we don't ask him in. If we don't invite him in, he will not come in. Okay, but he's there in every single one of our battles. And it's us that push him away and we push we push and push and push until he's no you can no longer hear him. Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You are not alone, (laughs) okay? And I have to tell you, it's more important to have peace and comfort in your heart to know that Jesus is there with you every step of your day than it is to let the enemy come in and avoid your head and put you down. And even those days where we think that we're on track, that's probably the one day you need him the most. I know, because I went out and cut wood the other day. I hadn't prayed. And I nearly took my finger out. (laughs) Now, normally, I would pray before I did that. But no. So, you know, it, prayer works, <laughs> trust me. Having him there with you is, it's just, you just got to do it. Now, I'm still confirming, okay, that God's with you. 1 Samuel 10, 7. And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasional de- occasion demands for God is with you, every one of you. And again, 1 Chronicles 17, 2, then Nathan said to David, do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. Are we getting it yet? (laughs) Am I making my point? (laughs) Once more, okay. God is with you. <laughs> no, I've, got, I've still got another one for you. Zechariah 8.23 Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of the Jewish man, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Every situation we get ourselves in, He's there. Stop pushing him away. Trust me, this helped me more than I think it even helped you yesterday. (laughs) I think I was the one that needed this message. But we're about to flip this on its head, okay? Because, as you've noticed, all of these scriptures have all been in the Old Testament, yeah? And there's one in the New Testament and I'm going to let you see if you work it out. Luke 17, 21. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So we've just replaced this little in with a within. So God's no longer just with us, he's in us. How cool is that? That's where you want him. In your heart. Because that's where we hear God the best, is if we're listening to our heart 
then we know we're hearing from God. If it's in your head, you're listening to the devil. Put him down. Get him out of your head. Because it's not a nice place to be, trust me. My head gets in the road all the time. I want to go back to the days just after I got saved where three days I had silence. (laughs) It was awesome. Three days of nothing. No mental chatter. No attack from the devil telling me that I'm worthless, that I'm useless, that I'm not pretty enough, that I'm not a good enough massage therapist, that I've got no idea what I'm doing. Well, guess what? I don't need to. (laughs) Because God knows what I'm doing. And he directs my path. So how cool is that? We've gone from the Old Testament where God's just with you to now God is within you. That's pretty awesome. Hebrews 13, 5. This is the ESV, so I'm flipping through a few translations here, aren't I? But anyway, keep up with me. Keep your life free from love of money and be content. So this is a bit, there's a bit more to this, but anyway. With what you have, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going anywhere. Even when you do push him away, he's still there. But you know what? You've got free will. And he's not going to intrude on you if you don't ask him to help. It's no different to a good friend. good friend will be there with you. They're not going to intervene, or some of them do, but most of them don't intervene unless you ask for their help. Okay, I know when I go to a course and I don't get something, if I don't put my hand up and ask for the teacher to clarify it, I'm going to walk out of there totally confused and not know what I'm doing. So if I ask the teacher for the revelation or the, the, the give it to me in the way I'm going to understand it, then I get it. And that's what God will do for you too. Deuteronomy 4.31 For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not leave you or destroy you. Everyone says that it's God's fault. It's not God's fault. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) Or forget the covenant with your fathers that, that he swore to them. God is not your problem. The only reason he's your problem is because you've shut him out the out, you've shut the door on him and you won't let him in. God doesn't bring all the bad stuff into your life. He's the one that brings love, peace, joy, hope, prosperity, all of those things. Deuteronomy 3, 6, uh, 31, 6, sorry. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear to be in dread of them. For it is the Lord, your God, who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. He is there in every single situation. Now, I know Brennan's just done another, another 14 days in isolation. And there were days where I just wanted to hang that phone up (laughs) because he was not in a good headspace. But when I hung the phone up, I went into prayer because Brennan's not a Christian and I don't deal with him not being good because he's always good. Okay, Brennan is the one that's my strength. So when he's down, it's like, no, I can't handle it. Sorry. So how did I deal with that? I'd hang the phone up and I'd start praying for him. Because his choice to be able to go out and be in, in the, the streets or in the world or be with his mates or be at home 
was taken away from him because of COVID-19 and then the restrictions of isolation coming back into a country or our country. So his problem is that choice has been taken away from him. So he can't just get up and walk out the door when he feels like it because he's got to abide by the government rules or he gets into big trouble. So the only way I knew, other than being on the phone with him five, six, seven, eight times a day, was to pray. And it got him through. Till three o'clock the Friday morning and he was out that door <laughs> with a police escort. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? <laughs> you have to be police escorted out of, out of ISO. So Jacob has a dream that there's a ladder that goes up to heaven and God's looking down to him and talking to him and, and it says, Genesis 28, 15, Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. But he still ain't going there. It's only for that one situation. He's still there. You just got to keep asking. So now that I've overcome my loneliness and it's not bringing tears to my eyes, I have a choice to be alone. And that's a blessing. So John 15, 4 and 5 this is how I got through. Abide in me and I abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So this is Jesus, this is red letter in your Bibles. Jesus is telling you. So he is the vine and we are the branches. If we don't abide in him, he's not going to abide in us. Which then makes you lonely. Okay, but you have to ask him in. And when you do, you bear fruit. So the fruit are all the blessings that you get. It's the, the leading people to the Lord. It's all that stuff. It's being that good example, the light in somebody's darkness. I even got told the other day that I wasn't 50 plus. Thank you. <laughs> How nice is that? That comes from the Lord. I'm now ageless. Woohoo! <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Just make me a little bit thinner and I'll be happy. <laughs> But I'm me, so, you know, it's all good. <laughs> so think of this. This is a bit of an analogy that I thought up last night. Don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. Think of this like making a cake. And you leave out the rising ingredient, which is baking powder or in Australia, we use self-raising flour. So you, you went and used plain flour and didn't add baking powder to it. What's going to happen? It's not going to rise. And if it does, it's going to sag in the middle. <laughs> and then, if it's anything like the cakes that I've made, they end up hard. And you, they don't even bounce. They just go on the ground. Okay? Or you can think of it as you've left out the flavour. So just say you wanted it to be a banana cake and you didn't put the bananas in it. Well, it ain't a banana cake anymore, is it? <laughs> and you leave out the chocolate, like the cocoa. You leave that out in a chocolate cake. <laughs> it's cake, that's right. You know, and it's not, people just go, oh, it's just cake. I don't want that. You know? Everybody wants chocolate cake. 
<laughs> I tell these, I tell you this, this is going off bed, but anyway, it's about chocolate. <laughs> Brennan's nan used to make him banana cake all the time when she was alive. And we go over there one day and she's made him a banana cake and she's put chocolate icing on it. Who puts chocolate icing on a banana cake? And I've kind of looked at it and gone, okay. And I've looked at Brennan and I went, really? Chocolate icing on a banana cake. Anyway, we sat down, we had it, we had a beautiful time, spent time with his nan. And we lived across the road, like directly across the road from his nan at this time. And we've gone home and I looked at him and went, do you eat chocolate icing on a banana cake? Like, who does that? And he looked at me and goes, nope, never done that before. She's never put chocolate icing on a banana cake before. And I went, right, so why did she do it? And he goes, I don't know. That was obviously a sign that she was getting dementia. <laughs> God love her. But you know what? We now make our banana cake with chocolate icing. <laughs> it's now became our norm. So if you come to my house for banana cake, you're going to have chocolate icing, okay? Just warning. <laughs> you might think I'm strange, but it's good. <laughs> okay. John 15, 6 through 7, ESV. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So if you don't abide, Jesus is just going to turn his back on you and go, catch you later. It's just the way it is. Be like having a friend, just that your best friend that's just, you've walked into, you've wanted to go up and they've just turned their back on you and gone, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. Goodbye. You can see it doesn't, it? The, the whole mood of the whole room is just going, blah. <laughs> Many of them? No more though, Bart, no more. <laughs> That's right. So another way to overcome is to ask for wisdom through faith. John 15, 8 through 9 of the ESV. By this my Father is, is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, as have I loved you, abide in my love. Now, that was not the scripture I was meant to read. Oops. You know what I did? I did the wrong one, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, dear. It's, oh, I, yeah, but I'm so honest, I'm just going to tell you the truth, you know, like put it all out there. It's just the way it is. Let's see what scripture I've got to come up next just before I go keep going. Oh, look, there it is there. Well, added bonus. <laughs> added bonus. <laughs> okay, this is the one I was supposed to read you. I think, yes. No, it's not. No, we've done that one. No, we've done, I'm going backwards. That's what I'm doing. So I, you should not give me one of these. I've just decided this is not, just not my thing. This is the one I was supposed to read you. <laughs> If any of you lacks wisdom, yes, we're there, hello, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Let him ask of God who gives to all liber liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So in faith, you receive wisdom to all of your problems, your woes, your blows, everything. And faith is just like making a purchase on the internet. You get on there, you find the, the, um, 
the shop you want to shop in, you press pay to PayPal or put your credit card number in there and you send go, you've paid for something you haven't even got. And then you've got to wait for Australia Post to turn up. Mate, by the time I get my stuff, I've forgotten what I purchased. <laughs> it's like Christmas all over again. <laughs> but it's faith because you've just purchased something. But if you go to a store, you've got it in your hot little hand and you hand your payment over, don't you? And you know you've got it. But when you purchase online, you have faith that the people you're buying it from are reputable and that you're going to receive those goods in the mail when Australia Post finally deliver it. And if you're anything like me, you make sure it's coming from Australia so it doesn't take a month to turn up. <laughs> okay? That's what faith is. So if you don't know what faith is, that's what it is. Okay? And we all have it. Trust me. Isaiah 42, 16, we're back on track. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. So when you're on murky waters or unstable ground, God's the one that's going to make it a lot more stable and a lot more straight than you get into that fork in the road and go, on, which way do I go? He's going to make sure you take the right path. And I, for one, have been down many wrong roads and many bumpy roads, trust me. We all have. Doesn't matter how good you think you are. We all have. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed. So our outer self is this body, vehicle. Okay? Our inner self is our spirit, our soul. The thing we can't see, but it's our life. It's our life force. Being renewed by day by day. How is it renewed? By reading the word. For this light, momentarily, affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that, we are, that are seen, but to the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that, we are, that are seen are, eter are, are, eternal. are eternal, are unseen. Sorry, that's the bit I, I missed the un. <laughs> I knew I'd made a mistake. Yeah, so the things that you can't see are all the things that come from God. That's where your faith comes in. You have to believe it. You have to believe that God is who he says he is. He is going to make your path straight. He is going to give you love, glory, joy, all those great things that we're all looking for. And he's going to give you your purpose in life too. And then you haven't got any time to be lonely because, trust me, you're as busy as I am. <laughs> so we all have choices, okay? We have a choice to be alone or to be lonely. And they are different things because we are, there are a lot of us, especially mums, just want to withdraw from our kids and have some solitude in the bathroom for five minutes. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> but <laughs> there does come a time, Bart, where you do need five minutes to yourself, okay? <laughs> That's right, okay? 
but it's when you get lonely and you get those invading thoughts. They're not your thoughts. They're coming from the devil. Might even tell you to go out and do something really random and stupid that you would never have done in your life. Shut it down. And how do you shut it down? If you don't know how to pray, talk to him. Have a conversation as if he's your best mate and he's sitting right there. Because that's all he wants you to do. That's a prayer. A prayer is a conversation with God. So if you're ready right now to give your heart to Jesus, I'm going to invite you right now to say this nice little prayer out loud with us. Anyone online, join us, text us, put a message on our Facebook page and tell us that your whole life's just changed. We need your feedback. We want your feedback. So, this is prayer is, I'll give you some words. If you want to change them, that's fine. Say it in your words. But this is just how I've written it. So, Heavenly Father, I am sorry. I am a sinner. Without you, I cannot change. I believe Jesus died on the cross. For my, sins, for my sins, taking them to hell, them to hell. And, leaving them there. and leaving them there. He rose again, he rose again. freeing me, freeing and, I and I receive my salvation now, now. As, I as I take up my cross. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I, ask I ask that you come into my heart, into my heart. direct my path, from this day forward. This day forward. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the club. <laughs> this is one of the best putt clubs you can ever be in, the Christian club, okay? Trust me, your whole life changes. This smile, hey, it's a rare thing. Trust me, what it used to be, not no more. So, so if you just prayed that prayer and you're at home, in your lounge room or in bed, wherever, wherever you're watching this, please go and seek yourself a reputable church. Go and visit a few of them in a few Sundays and find the place where you're meant to be. The Lord says, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. And what that means is you will know where you fit when you walk in. You will feel that you are welcomed, that you are loved, and that you were received in that church when you walk in there. So please, don't sit at home and go, okay, I'm saved now, I've got my, my place in heaven, I've just booked it, my, my reservation's in there, I get to go to heaven when I die. You still need to get fed, and the best way to be fed is to come to church and get that fellowship and be with like-minded people. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> okay. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for always being with us Thank throughout you. our day, directing our path, Thank for loving us, for guiding us, Thank and for teaching us how to live a better life. Better Lord, we ask that you encompass everybody in our southwest slopes region. It's a big region huge and comfort all of those people out there that have missing people in their lives and those people that are missing father we ask that you give them hope and you direct them back to their homes right now there are so many people missing in the world today human trafficking and everything else that's going on just people suicidal we had young 12 year old Bless the people that are involved with those. Please put peace in their hearts. Love them and show them through to the light in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for being here today. We love you, we honour you, and we hope...
that you come through those doors and join us next, next week at 10am. Bye. Ha, that's right.